Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel. My name is Kehunda Nameri. In today's video, we are going to look at two properties that is air has weight and air occupies space. Let's do an experiment to illustrate the first property, air has weight. So in this experiment, we are going to use two balloons, a thread, a scissor, a stand and a meter rule. So let's dive right into it. So first we're going to blow some air in these two balloons. Now let's tie it with our thread like this. So we're going to tie the balloons to the ruler like as you're saying. They should be of the same what? They should be of the same height. So now we are going to cut one of the balloons and see what happens. So, according to what you're seeing, this means this balloon is heavier than this balloon. So before, they were balanced. But now, after removing air from this balloon, it's now slightly bent towards this balloon, meaning that this balloon is heavier than this balloon, hence, air has weight. Now, let's look at the next property air occupies space. We are going to do different experiments to show that air occupies space. So in this experiment, we are going to use a transparent container that has water and a glass. And in this glass, there is air. Even here, there is air. Even this bottle, there is air. Everywhere, there is air. But then, what shows that there is air inside here? You can't see it. Air is invisible. But then what shows that? Let's prove it. We are going to have this paper and we fold it. Then after folding it, we said this glass has air. And so it is, the air is occupying this glass. It won't allow anything to enter. So let's put it inside. And then we are going to submerge this glass into this water. But for visibility purposes, we are going to put something in this water which will not get wet. And then we are going to submerge our glass inside this water and make sure it is completely submerged. Are you seeing how the paper is moving? See, like the air inside this glass is not allowing even this small paper to enter inside. So it is completely submerged in water. So let's remove it and see if actually this paper got wet. So after removing it, we are going to remove our paper and see if our paper is wet or not. So we're going to check. Paper is actually very dry, very dry. So what we've just done proves that air actually occupies space. Let's do something else to prove it more. So next, let's use bottles. And these bottles, like as we said, they are occupied with air. But then what shows? Because air is invisible. So like as we've said, this bottle has air inside. So let's cover it to make sure air doesn't escape from anywhere. Then let's squeeze this bottle to see if it will get crushed. Air inside is not actually allowing me to squeeze this bottle. But then let's put an opening here and squeeze it. So I'm able to crush it because air is no longer inside this bottle. So this one, we're going to use this bottle and we put the balloon inside. But then we said this bottle is filled with air. 
So let's put this balloon inside. So we're going to blow air inside this balloon and actually see if it will be blown inside. So let's do it. Ah, it has refused completely. So air is actually not being blown in the balloon. You know why? Because in this bottle, we already have air. So that is not allowing me to blow air inside this balloon for it to expand because the bottle is already full. It has air. We are going to use the same balloon and then we'll try with this bottle. And you're going to tell me your observations. Write it in the comment section. Let's blow air inside this balloon and we see what is going to happen. Why is this balloon expanding in this bottle, yet in this bottle, the balloon is not expanding? Why? We have actually a hole on this bottle. So when I blow air inside this balloon, it pushes air inside this bottle outside via this hole which we made on this bottle, allowing this balloon to expand. Unlike the first bottle which we used and which didn't have any hole, and the balloon, remember, had sealed the top. So when we blew air, the balloon couldn't expand because there was no room for it to expand. Why? Because the bottle is already filled with air. But there is something happening here which we are not noticing. When I blow air inside this balloon, the balloon expands but then contracts again. Let's do it. Why? Why is it coming back? It is supposed to expand and remain there. Why is it coming back? There is a hole here, right? But then, that's not the answer. Let's do something else. We are going to blow in air, then we touch this hole. Then from there, tell me the answer in the comment section. When I broke the hole, I stopped the air from refilling the bottle and pushing the air inside the balloon outside. So that is why the balloon remains big. But when the hand is removed, it will allow air outside to come back and refill the bottle, hence pushing the air inside this balloon outside. Let's do it and see what will happen. There you go. Therefore, Air occupies space. So how do we use this in our day-to-day -day life? Well, let's explore some of the areas where these two properties can be used. When air is pumped into tires, it fills the space inside those tires, hence easing the movement of vehicles. In plumbing systems, Understanding the movement of air and water in pipes helps to prevent air locks and ensure proper water flow in the whole system. So in today's video, we have learned two properties of air, that is air occupies space and air has weight, and we have done different activities to demonstrate these properties. We have also seen some day-to-day -day applications of these properties. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any comments, please put them down in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye.